In the last video, we ended with all this crazy wiring to accomplish elevator shunt trip and to monitor the power circuit for it. And I want to show you an alternative method of completing elevator shunt trip and power monitoring um, with a special type of shunt trip breaker. Now this is not a fire alarm part, but uh, it's something the electricians would have to purchase. One thing I didn't mention in the other videos is Elevator shunt really has nothing to do with the elevator people, so this is accomplished between the electricians and the fire alarm people. Um, the elevator guys themselves have nothing to do with it. So, you know, the electricians bring in the, the voltage to the elevator contractor's equipment, and we shunt it, essentially. Um, so, anyway, instead of just buying... A typical shunt trip breaker like I've shown here where you you know you give it 120 volts and it disconnects um, a company called Cooper Busman um, manufactures one that's got a lot of these components already built in so uh, I want to take a look at that so this is our elevator machine room just like we've had in the last few videos um, we're no longer going to need our separate source of 120 volts um, this new controller utilizes its own, one of the phases of the elevator power. I'm going to bring in um, kind of my representation of that shunt trip breaker um, opened up. So this big red handle on the right would be the disconnect. Um, looking here. That, that would just kind of throw this is none of this stuff really matters but essentially what we have here is we've got a terminal block up here which we'll look at in more detail in a second and that terminal block it has a bunch of factory wiring going down to these two cube relays here um, the cube relays are wired into a bunch of different things but essentially these take the place of among other things they take the place of our two MR 101s that we had in the last video um, and so that's why we don't need those anymore all we're gonna need from our side for this is um, one addressable relay and one addressable monitor module and we're gonna look at how that's wired we're gonna scroll down and take a zoomed in look at just the terminal block here and I'll show you how this would get wired now obviously this doesn't take up as much space as it's showing here. The actual device looks more like um, that drawing. But so that we can read the labels, um, wiring this thing up is pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our relay module. We're going to go common to N-O-F-A-N, which stands for normally open fire alarm in. So normally open on our relay and that part's done. So now the shunt trip portion of it is complete. This is just like if we were taking power um, in the last video, uh, or I guess two videos ago, running through normally open to our MR101. Well, in this case, as I mentioned before, there's a bunch of internal factory wired jumpers going down to their cube relays. And so um, that's already done. Then we'll switch colors here. We're going to wire up our FMM, our monitor module. We're going to come into normally closed B and normally closed FR down here. And um, this orange jumper that's drawn here is factory installed. Now we'll need to install our resistor as well, which uh, the way these terminals are, uh, the, the way that they've that these are spaced out you're probably going to need to you know do like a um, unless you've got some abnormally large 47k resistors you're not going to be able to use the ones that come with the module or you'll have to cut it and wire nut it but essentially we're going to come out just onto the same two terminals um, and you can buy this piece of equipment with a few different options and you want to make sure that it has the option to where when you disconnect this switch it doesn't cause a supervisory once you know assuming you program this for supervisory um, it's kinda cool what they do there's a little micro switch on this disconnect so that if you were to lose power like let's say ComEd if the switch was on turned on like the elevator was running and you lost ComEd power you'd get this supervisory but if you walk up and shut power off you don't get the supervisory because there's a micro switch on this main disconnect which is wired into one of these terminals and it prevents 
the supervisory from activating when this manual disconnect is activated. And that makes sense if you think about it, because imagine, you know, the elevator people come in and work on their elevators all the time. They don't have to consult a fire alarm company to do it. So this allows them to come in, disconnect their power to work on their elevator and it's not going to put the panel into supervisory. Now if you lost power without the switch going, um, then you would get the, disc, the the supervisory. Now the downside of this option, because again this is a specific option that you would you would get when you bought the piece of equipment, the downside of it is the only way to test um, your power supervision is by pulling a fuse out of you know one of these, I think there's three fuses on here, I only drew two um, you know, you have to pull the right fuse out so you lose the correct phase, and we figured that out the hard way during an elevator final one time, but then after doing it a couple times, it, was, it wasn't so bad if you have a fuse puller. Um, you know, you're doing it live, but um, it was a kind of a cool way to test it, and I really think that that's a cool feature that, you know, because imagine if the elevator people are used to working on their equipment, they would really have, if, if it was your first time in a building, you'd have no idea that disconnecting elevator power like that um, would cause a supervisory on the fire alarm panel so they're not going to know to do that so I, anyway I think that's a cool option and it really is just as simple this is all there would be to shunt if you bought the right piece of equipment so if you look at you know all the wiring stuff that went into the other method of doing it um, I really do think that uh, this newer way is a better bet and uh, maybe this is more common in other parts of the country but or other parts of the world but from where I'm working I think I've seen this a handful of times at most in most cases you're probably not going to know when you're bidding a job or ordering equipment for the job if this is a type of breaker that they have installed so I would recommend erring on the side of caution um, you need the same number of addressable relays and monitor modules, you know, just one of each for shunt trip. I would come prepared with those MR101s or 201s. You know, I personally carry those on my truck just for situations like this. But I would prepare for the worst, which would be the other situation. Um, and then, you know, hopefully this is the equipment that gets ordered and then you don't need the two um, MR101s. Um, this is the manual that I found online for the disconnect switch that I'm talking about. It comes with all sorts of different options so um, read through it but because I talked so much about it I wanted to at least give some other information for it. And they actually have some videos online. They're short, um, they're not super thorough but they uh, you can google this and you'll find it. So I will see you in the next video.